Hey, so right now I'm in the um, Polar Haven, which is a little <clears throat> hut that is out on the ice on Lake Frixel. We've melted out our limno hole here, so we're able to do our sampling. Um, Rachel is here with the pump and uh, we're siphoning water out of the lake. Um, Brad's also here with us collecting lake water. Um, there's a lot of background noise um, and that's because there's a huge windstorm out right now and it's making quite a lot of ruckus in the background. Um, yeah, so we're collecting water at various depths and as you guys might have figured out already, these depths will have different microbes in them. Um, and we can learn a lot about the microbes uh, in the lakes by you know studying them the whole communities um, but what we're gonna one of the things we're gonna do today is we're gonna start isolation cultures and that is so that we can isolate um, individual microbes and then um, do more focused studies on them back in our lab in Ohio and that's great because we can continue working on them we don't have to be in Antarctica um, and we can also use those investigations as models for understanding how they survive under these extreme conditions. So for example, we can kind of tease apart different extreme conditions like low temperature, or we can like pretend it's Antarctic winter time, or we can change the amount of nutrients we give them. Um, and this lets us um, tease apart, you know, different extreme environmental conditions that these uh, microbes have to uh, deal with here in Antarctica. So we're going to take these back to the lab here um, and we're going to put them in some small flasks that we can use to get them started growing um, under different conditions um, using, for example, we can boil rice um, to add a source of food for them um, so that will help in collecting these organisms that can't make food for themselves like the algae um, which are similar to plants. Uh, and so we can also do other things with them, um, such as looking at them under the microscope, um, both just a normal microscope, which you might see in every an everyday lab uh, or classroom, as well as um, these really fancy electron microscopes, which can give you a super high resolution close up image of the organisms um, in really good detail. Um, so you can look at how they're interacting together and the different shapes and sizes, um, as well as different things that they might have on their surfaces, um, in addition to all of that other, um, all those other measurements and investigations we can do with these organisms back at our University of Ohio. Yeah, um, so I'm Eckhart, I am the undergrad on this project, and at the moment I'm essentially trying to capture the fungi um, from our water samples. Um, essentially the fungi play pretty important roles in the lake, and what I want to do is I want to get them out of the water and into some media that they're going to like, um, because we want them to survive until we get back to Miami so we can sort of start to culture them and build these models of how this lake is working. Because we can't exactly bring the whole lake back with us to the university, so we can only really take bits and pieces to, tr to try and then better understand how they work and maybe sort of begin to hypothesize how the whole lake is working. So for that, I have a marmite uh, that's been boiled, so it's sterile, as well as rice that's been sterile because both of these have important nutrients that the fungi tend to like. So I want to see uh, if the fungi prefer the marmite, which has yeast extract, or if they prefer the rice, which has a lot more sugars in it. Um, and additionally, we're adding in some media that we know kind of simulates the lake. So ultimately, I want to get these guys separated, and I want to essentially then expose them to their favorite food, which is the algae in the lake, because these guys are parasites. So they act almost like pirates, where they'll take the food that the algae are making and sort of take it for themselves and push it into the water, which completely changes how everything interacts. And up until recently, people haven't really noticed that or appreciated it, so I kind of want to delve into this realm. So, yeah, that's what I'll do here. Um, Rachel, can you uh, tell us what it smells like in here? It smells like a stinky butt, Miss Lucy, because 
this water has a ton of sulfur in it, which is actually a type of food for um, a certain kind of bacteria. So there's certain bacteria that can actually use minerals for food, and they really like reduced sulfur, and it stinks. But it's kind of cool because just by smelling the water, you can tell that there's those kind of microbes in the water we're collecting.